Emery go bowl for. And this is Uncut News. After years of watching Lucid 9 and Comp Street prisoners successfully escaping, four of the inmates at Mazaruni said it's their turn to break out of prison. The men are 26-year-old Samuel Gavaya and 22-year-old Ryan Jones, both convicted of manslaughter. 25-year-old convicted murderer Imran Ramsewak and 44-year-old convicted murderer and death row inmate Kendrick Light. The four men were discovered missing this morning and an alarm was immediately raised. In the statement from the police, well, the cops basically asked for the public's help in finding the men and called on the individuals to surrender or, to quote Trump, be shot down like a dog in the street. Hiring a person to evict a tenant is supposed to be an unpleasant but normally peaceful part of the rental business. But one landlord in Sofia recently hired the most unprofessional mover ever. And yesterday, that man, 26-year-old Randy Wiggins, was charged for murdering the tenant he was actually hired to evict. According to court documents, on February 8th, Wiggins was supposed to evict 36-year-old Kevin Smith from a home in Deefield, Sofia. But during the eviction process, the two got into an argument that turned violent. But the fight then turned deadly when Wiggins whipped out a knife and stabbed up Smith before fleeing the scene. Wiggins was remanded to prison until his next court date in March. Over five years after the two conspired to murder Nathan Passard, his wife, 52-year-old Beverly Passard, and 27-year-old hitman Oswald Yaw have been jailed for the crime. On January 26, the duo pleaded guilty to the murder as they no longer wished to proceed to trial. Passard was sentenced to 29 years, while Yaw was slapped with a 39-year sentence. Both will become eligible for parole after serving a minimum of 20 years in prison. But, in case you forgot, old Bev here paid Yaw to come down from Barbados to kill her husband back in September 2015. Such a shame. It be your own people sometimes. On Monday night, 28-year-old GDF runk Leroy Hercules died and another person injured following a head-on collision between the two motorcyclists in Sofia. Both of the men were taken to the JPHC where Hercules was declared dead on arrival while the other victim is still undergoing medical treatment. The police didn't release the person's name, but they have claimed that both individuals were escaping. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale is this 2018 Suzuki Swift RS Sports Edition. It comes with Bluetooth, CD stereo, steering controls, crystal lights, mock rims, fog lamps, and much, much more. Pay cash for $3.6 million, or pay down as low as $720,000 with around $70,000 monthly, and it's yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info, or visit their showrooms at 171 Peter Rose Street, Queenstown, or lot to Lamar Street, and tell them Noriko sent you for this sweet, sweet deal. This morning, the GDF Coast Guard deployed two vessels from Barima Waini in search of a boat that was full of mutilated bodies. Police say another fishing boat crew made the horrifying discovery sometime yesterday over 112 miles offshore Guiana. Initial reports indicate that the boat has no markings to identify the nationalities of the victims or even the origin of where, you know, where the boat came from. It is also unknown how many bodies are on board. However, a full investigation will be performed once the boat is secured and brought to shore. 30 companies have expressed interest for the consultancy services in conducting a feasibility study and detailed designs for the construction of the Quarantine River Bridge. Companies from Holland, Turkey, the United States, Korea, Brazil, Mexico, Japan, Italy, India, Spain, Suriname, Philippines, Canada, Dubai, China, Guyana, Trinidad, and even Lebanon all submitted proposals. Some of the proposals submitted were for joint ventures. Nevertheless, the Public Works Ministry expressed great satisfaction with the level of interest being shown for the project around the world. Now, let's see which one will actually get the contract. Build, baby, build. Three men were just charged with possession of an apparently magical bark of cannabis, despite all three of them saying that neither has any idea where the weed came from. 46-year-old rental car businessman Troy Jacobs, 43-year-old barber Perez Kush, and 75-year-old legally blind pensioner Ivor Anderson all pleaded not guilty to the charge. According to the three men's attorney, Jacob was simply the driver of the car, which was intercepted by police on the day in question. Kush said that he gave Anderson a bag of fruits, but it totally didn't have over three kilos of weed in it when he gave it to him, and Anderson said that he was given the bag, but because he's legally blind, he didn't even know what was in the bag. The three men were placed on $500,000 bail each and are expected to return to court March 1st. 
Who said luxury can't be affordable? Move into your own home in 2021. Lenora Estate, West Coast MRR properties are within your reach. Move out to the landlord's place and put that rent money towards your own 5,000 square foot property. Call WhatsApp 592-618-5702 for more info or call plus 1-516-476-2172. It's now time for today's Runner Report. Today, the nation recorded 30 new cases. There are now a total of 188 persons dead, there are 8 persons in the ICU, and 538 persons in home isolation. The total number of known cases in the country now stands at 8,262. So, please people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give 6 feet of space between you and others. Now, let's take a look at news in the region. On Sunday, Peru's Foreign Affairs Minister Elizabeth Astete resigned from her post after it was known that she had been vaccinated for the Rona, even though she is not a part of any of the at-risk groups that should receive the vaccine first. Well, as it turns out, she might have been only one of several high-level officials who were secretly vaccinated before everyone else sometime last month. Health Minister Oscar Ugarte has ordered a summary investigation into the internet to punish all of those who got the vaccine, even though they were supposed to wait. Today, minibus operators from across St. Vincent and the Grenadines engage in protest auction today. They are calling for some form of compensation to offset the losses they will incur due to a reduction in passenger capacity. Under the Public Health Act, all public vehicles may only drive half full inclusive of the driver and conductor. This means if a minibus carries 18 passengers, it must now carry 9, inclusive of the driver and the conductor. So, needless to say, they're pretty angry about that. The Giselle is celebrating their 14th anniversary this month, which means they are shaving off prices. Get the TL3 smartphone for just $14,000, or the TL3 Pro for just $17,500. Plus, get a 30-day Giselle Prime bundle when you buy any LTE handset. Also available at cellular plus digital stores in the city mall, Starbucks Square, Massey Providence, and Massey Turquoise. Don't miss out! And now for our weird news story of the day. 91-year-old U.S. Navy meteorologist Paul Grisham spent a year monitoring weather conditions in Antarctica in 1967, where he worked as a weather forecaster for a science station and airport on Ross Island. However, when he returned to sunny California, he realized that he had misplaced his wallet on the icy continent. Now, thanks to the efforts of fellow researchers Stefan DeCarto and Bruce McKee, Grisham got his wallet back after 53 years. According to reports, the wallet was recently uncovered behind a locker during the demolition of a building at McMurdo Station, the southernmost town on Earth. His wallet actually sat there untouched for five decades, which is actually an impossible feat to perform in Guyana. How's this for a bedtime story? Stupidy Bill spends thousands of dollars on new printer ink. Sensi Bill, on the other hand, refills his empty cartridges at Printfulness for just $1,000. He gets a six-month 100% money-back guarantee on every refill. Then the bucket band and the story ends. Call the WhatsApp 667-0066 or visit them on Facebook at Printfulness Guiana. Don't be a stupidy Bill. Moving on to our uncut news, views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guiana the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, how do you feel about Biden considering the removal of sanctions on Venezuela? Just somebody said, for me, reversing the sanctions is a bad idea. Letting them go would not guarantee us peace, as they can cause trouble at any time. It's like the example in the video. The person got a heavy fine, so they know what not to do in the future, and letting them go means nothing to them. JJ Singh said, I won't say reverse the sanctions from Venezuela is bad, but first they need to clean up their arcs. Jay Jiram said, any country who becomes friends with USA will become friends of Guyana. This is a loaded comment. Give it some thought and you'll understand what I mean. Well, of course, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And the friend of my friend, well, I guess he's my friend. And Young Stunner said, President Ali said he doesn't want no foreign military base here. So President Biden moved to the next step and fixed things with Venezuela. More problems for us if we and Venezuela can't come to an agreement with Venezuela. Good answers, people. Before we get to tonight's question, these online shopping places tech their eyes and pass people. A set of money they want per pound of merchandise. 
You will die when you try to ship parts for your truck. Thankfully, truck parts are available in Guyana at Powered Automotive, Truck Spares, and Engine Parts at Lot 1161 EE Eccles. They stock spares for DAF, Bedford TM, International Freight Liners, and Cummins Engines. Call the WhatsApp 697-0171 or follow Powered Automotive, Truck Spares, and Engine Parts on Facebook. So for tonight's question... Minibus drivers both here and in St. Vincent are complaining of lost earnings due to restrictions on their passenger capacity. With that in mind, should the government consider buying out the minibus drivers who just can't cut it and form a public minibus system? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in Wednesday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Noriko Bulford saying goodnight, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!